So, well, it turned out that uh, basilar artery occlusion were the first target of endovascular therapy, at least in the modern area. The first case series happened in 1957 for the carotid territory, but it wasn't until 1988 that the Germans published the first modern area treatment um, of uh, intracranial arterial occlusions. And the target was the basal artery occlusion, specifically because in patients with moderate to severe deficits, uh, that disease is connected, it's linked to a really bad prognosis. Patients uh, have up to 80% of high degree of disability or mortality if they present with moderate or severe symptoms and an acute basal artery occlusion. So uh, what happened is uh, we incorporated endovascular treatment uh, a few decades ago to our armamentarium. And for many, many years, we were doing this uh, in a somewhat disorganized and improved manner, right? And just around uh, uh, 2010 or so, we start to organize ourselves a little better. You run three randomized clinical trials in the anterior circulation, the carotid territory, not the basal artery back then. And in 2013, those three trials were reported and unfortunately they were negative. The reason why they were negative uh, were, there were several reasons. I mean, that the treatment uh, wasn't as good in terms of the technique and technological advancements have happened since, but also there were a lot of problems with case selection and equipoise. Like many people weren't treating the patients that we felt would benefit the most in the trials, they were treating them outside the trials. And that is one of the reasons why the first three trials of anterior circulation occlusions were negative. Well, moving forward to 2015, since you had three negative trials that increased the level of equipoise globally. And then in 2015, we had five positive uh, clinical trials uh, done in what you call the early window, which is zero to six, zero to 12 hours or so in the anterior circulation. And then after that, a few more trials were published in that same territory and even trials in the extended time window. In parallel, there were two trials that were developed to study the basal artery territory. But the problem is, as those trials were being conducted, one was the best trial in China, uh, actually a trial that we did with the same attention network, uh, many of the same hospitals and, and there is a shared leadership um, and another trial called basics that was running mostly out of europe netherlands france and also later in brazil so these trials they were having problems recruiting uh, already but then when the results of the positive trials in the anterior circulation came it became even harder to randomize patients since basal artery occlusion is perceived as an even worse disease. So people uh, were likely starting to treat patients outside the trial in a very similar manner that we did with the negative 2013 uh, trials. Well, not surprisingly, the, these two trials, they had directional effects towards endovascular treatment being better, but they did not achieve significance. Many potential explanations for it, but one very likely explanation was the similar phenomenon that happened in the anterior circulation, right? There was a poor equipoise and uh, patients were treated outside the trials. Well, very much like in the 2013-2015 phenomenon, you reestablish equipoise and this is what happened in the attention network. In, in attention, in contrast with our previous effort in the best trial, we are very careful we essentially mandate consecutive enrollment. No patients were allowed to be treated outside the trial if they qualified. And we did our best to avoid crossovers, meaning if a patient was assigned to the interventional arm, they could not jump into the other arm and vice versa. We successfully did so. And then we were very pleased to see that uh, Within less than a year, you could complete the trial. These are very high volume Chinese centers, 36 
comprehensive study centers, and we had highly positive results.